Okay, welcome traders to the first of the live analysis sessions in 2021 with me, Patrick Miller. I hope you all had an enjoyable and relaxing holiday season and uh, back ready to, uh, to tackle the markets for another, for another year. And before we get going, can I just do a quick audio check if you can hear me loud and clear and you can see the Tickmill uh, welcome screen. If you could just type a Y in the chat box, that um, that would be helpful, <clears throat> and then we uh, we shall get going. Um, good stuff. Okay, so obviously before we start <clears throat> with today's chart analysis, uh, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer, uh, specifically for today's discussion. Um, any of the views represented by me here today are, uh, are solely mine and they're not indicative of or representative of Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. So with the risk disclaimer out of the way, uh, quickly some housekeeping. If you do have any questions regarding any of the, the charts we discussed today or any of the setups, um, or if you have a chart you'd like me to take a look at, if you could wait till the end of um, to the end of the presentation and then I'll open up the Q&A for anyone who has any questions. Um, so for those that are here for the first time, let me just briefly introduce myself. Uh, like I said, my name is Patrick Munley. After I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. And after a couple of years learning ropes, I left with some colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup post a merger in late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading or more appropriately day gambling uh, the S&P 500. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, the beginner's luck ran out and as the market phase changed, I basically began to average down into what were essentially losing positions I managed to give back all the gains I'd made and ultimately experienced a significant six-figure hit to my personal capital. And to say this was a, a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is, uh, is a huge understatement. Um, and it was at this point I really had to stand back and figure out if it was really feasible for me to make money or a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and I sought out a mentor with, ex with an excellent trading track record. Uh, working with my mentor for 18 months, two years. It was a period during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching and developing a strategy that suited my personality, uh, extensively back and forward testing and developing a rigorous risk management approach to underpin that strategy. But more importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably the most important watershed shift I made was moving from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to uh, being purely process-orientated. So what does that mean? Well, actually what it means is I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, uh, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of, of losing trades. Once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being a, a numbers game in which you're, you're simply playing the probabilities, you really lose that emotional investment and hellish roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or a string of trades. My focus is on the next hundred trades because I know that if I focus on excellence and execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. Uh, my multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, since 2013, the performance figures you can see on the screen at the moment are, I've actually been managing uh, external investor capital through a managed account service, and again, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Um, since 2010, I've also personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. I've also um, consulted to numerous brokers and trading education brands, 
contributing written content, webinars, and live presentation content on a range of topics, from market analysis to trading strategy developments and execution. In addition to my fund management and, uh, and private mentoring, I'm, uh, I'm also uh, exclusively a resident uh, market expert for Tickmill, providing uh, daily market analysis. Uh, this is an example here. You can access these, uh, these posts via the Tickmill blog. Uh, in the daily market outlook, I provide a, an overview of the, the current market conditions. I also uh, specify specific technical levels that I'm watching. I also reference flows in the markets from, uh, from various institutional trading desks. So that gives you a daily perspective uh, as the London session opens of, of where the market is and what the potential is uh, for the session ahead. I also provide a, uh, a daily uh, chart of the day or technical setup that I'm watching. And again, I give some fundamental background to that, uh, that thesis. And I also uh, talk about the specific technical setup that I'm watching and the criteria I'm looking for to, uh, to engage the markets. Um, I guess my other passion project is, uh, is really as head of trading and trader education um, for a leading uh, trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com. We offer uh, development and funding to retail trading talent at FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on uh, mindset development through a structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero uh, personal financial risk on a profit share basis. Uh, for those that are interested, you, this is the website here, fxcareerswap.com forward slash trade pro. Uh, you can book a call with, uh, with Joseph Mosley, who's, uh, who's the head of uh, onboarding traders there. Um, we've just recently also become CPD certified as well. Um, you can find out more information about what it is we do at FX Career Swap and what we offer uh, via the website. And like I say, if you are, are specifically interested in that, then you can uh, you can book a call with Joseph through, uh, through the website. So that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Um, now what I want to do is, uh, is talk about today. And uh, before I do jump in today, um, one of the, uh, as I mentioned before, I posted the, the chart of the day for, um, for Tickmill. Uh, today's chart of the day was uh, for the Australian dollar. Um, what I would also note is information that I share with the um, traders on the, uh, the FX Career Swap trading floor. And specifically um, today's, uh, today's chart of the day, like I say, was uh, the Australian dollar. I gave the technical, uh, the sorry, the fundamental background to, uh, to where we are with the Australian dollar and then talk about the specific technical setup. And uh, additional to that and some background information today, which, uh, which is pretty useful, is in terms of FX options flows. And um, one of the major flows I noted with the, the guys on the team this morning is, uh, is there's been a pretty big put buyer in the Australian dollar, um, 400 million traded, um, and what that basically gives the, the buyer of this, uh, this strategy is protection um, should the Australian dollar trade down below 75 cents. Uh, we're currently trading uh, above 77 in the Australian dollar. So that would be uh, you know, two figures lower in the Australian dollar. This, this trader, or, or sorry, this, uh, this position would get um, protection should we trade below 75. Uh, noteworthy is we have the RBA on the, uh, the 2nd of February, and um, it's possible that they, the RBA, looking at the, the current strength of the Australian dollar, may, may start to talk that down. And so this, uh, this, this bet or this position is ostensibly looking for protection against that potential move. So when I see these, uh, these option flows come through, I highlight these uh, to, to the guys on the team because this is useful um, off the chart information, so to speak, that general uh, retail traders wouldn't necessarily have access to, but helps to understand the sentiment of the market and the positioning in the market. So um, that was just a quick highlight in terms of the Australian dollar today that, um, that I noted for the guys. So what do I want to do today? Well, as we start the new year, what I thought we would do, um, I've had a bunch of questions um, come in regarding uh, the, the mar market mapping that I do in terms of uh, looking at the structure of the market. Um, and what I thought I would do today with some of these, uh, these major markets is show you how I work from, uh, from the weekly time scale, um, bringing it down through the daily and then onto the four hour charts, looking at using the, the structure in the market to identify potential 
um, trading opportunities or certainly areas of interest that I, I would potentially be looking to engage the market. So like I said, I'm going to run you through, um, I think we'll have time to do the, the dollar index, the euro, uh, sterling, the yen and the Aussie. And, um, and then I'll open it up to, um, to any questions. So like I said, we're going to start with a weekly chart here. And as we, uh, as most traders will be aware, the uh, US dollar has been in a decline. And what I'm looking for ostensibly when I look at this, this type of pattern in the market is I'm looking for a five wave um, pattern to complete to suggest that we could then see either a broader correction or a new trend develop in the market. So in terms of this current structure with the weekly chart, I have uh, an equality objective. So we have a, a potential A, B, C target. So this meaning that um, wave C is weak, equal to wave A, which would have us down at 87.42 um, in the dollar index. Now, when I look at wave B, what ideally what I want to see is that um, that wave subdivide into a five wave pattern. Um, and I've got uh, some markers in place here. I think we could be potentially um, coming into a third wave low here at these prior highs and the prior low, which is a structural support. We also have a couple of 50% retracement levels here coinciding around this 88, uh, 88 area. The target, again, that I'm looking for initially is this 8742. Um, so what I'm thinking at the moment with respect to the dollar index and as you know, so we come into the new year, and historically, uh, from a seasonal perspective, uh, January tends to be a, a slightly stronger period for the dollar index. So I'm looking for a pause in this downtrend, uh, downtrend and potential correction. So this is on the weekly time frame. So then what I want to do is go down to the daily chart and, uh, and have a look at the daily structure. And again, just digging down into looking at the current swing that we're in to the downside, is it possible or, or am I able to define a potential five wave structure? So if I'm, if I'm working on the thesis that we're potentially making a wave three low here. Um, now, what, what helps me qualify that idea that we're seeing this potential wave three low in place? Well, um, as those that work with me will know that um, the only rationale really that or the, the only supporting rationale for for taking any counter trend trades is i want to see significant momentum divergence i.e means that price is making new lows but momentum studies aren't and they're suggesting that the current trend is losing some strength and we can likely see a corrective phase develop so in terms of the week uh, the daily chart here you can see we've got a nice and clearly defined trend channel that we're working in we're stalling out. Uh, these orange lines here are weekly um, predicted range uh, support and resistance. So we're currently sit sitting at weekly uh, range support, projected weekly range support. Um, we've traded back up here on the daily time frame. Um, we've come into the, uh, the weekly pivot and uh, got a pretty nice bullish reversal pattern developing here. But we're going to need to see this take out the weekly uh, range uh, sorry, the weekly pivot first and then the weekly range resistance to encourage the idea that we could see a, um, a fourth wave develop. So now if we take this into the four hour chart, we can see we can get a little bit more granular now and start to think about um, what, we, what criteria we'll be looking for to suggest that we can see this fourth wave develop. Well, like I said, at the moment, currently we, um, we've got into the, the overbought area in terms of uh, the momentum studies here and um, and price has stalled out currently at uh, at this weekly pivot so to my mind if we hold here and we can't make uh, we can't make new highs uh, today then I could see the potential for us to trade back down into um, into some into the support zone here at uh, at this 8950 and potentially put in an inverse head and shoulders scenario. So let's draw that in now as well. <clears throat> uh, what's this? So this will be our left shoulder. And this will be our head. And then we'll be looking for a right shoulder uh, to develop into either tomorrow or Monday. As we know, Fridays and Mondays are typically uh, high probability times for markets to, to put in uh, 
points of, of reversal or correction at least. And so if we can hold this 89.50, we get a pullback, we consolidate. We've obviously got payrolls coming out tomorrow, which can be a catalyst for the remove. If we, uh, if we hold here, if we can hold 89.50, get some consolidation overnight, and that could set up the potential for this um, corrective move in the dollar index. Note, I only, I'm, I'm talking about corrections here. I'm, I'm, I'm not trading, I'm not looking to, to pick tops or bottoms here. I'm looking at the logical prog progression of the price action and where the opportunities are. And um, if we scroll out here, you can see that I've mapped, we've got a, a one, two, this will be our three, four. And in terms of the scope and scale of this three, four, I'm really just interested in, um, in tracking the scope and scale initially of the prior wave. So I'm using this 91 versus this 89.20 low as a realistic expectation for what we can anticipate in terms of the potential wave four. We also have some prior highs here. Now I use this in two ways because initially this is certainly if we get up into this area and we have a three wave pattern, um, watching for bearish reversal patterns there because it's an opportunity to, to join the trend and play for a new low in terms of price. But equally, if we don't get a reversal pattern here, or if we don't find supply coming into the market in and around these levels, then that also gives us information because what that can then tell us is that we could be in for a bigger corrective phase in terms of, in terms of the dollar index. So these markers in terms of price are really useful um, in terms of two sets of information. One, they're either going to give you an opportunity to join the trend, or two, if the, if these if price exceeds this prior swing, then we've got to think in terms of a big in terms of a larger scope in terms of the corrective phase. And what do I do then in terms of logically moving this forward and using the same uh, application? Well, I look to the next biggest swing, and then that will give me uh, the new target in terms of the corrective phase, which would in this instance as uh, the last three wave move we had on a major scale uh, or on the higher uh, frequency would take us up into this 92.15 and these prior lows. But again, it's all step by step. We don't want to get ahead of ourselves and the initial target versus this current swing low and, uh, and this wave structure that we're currently in will be this 91 area. Does that, uh, does that make, do you, can you follow the rationale there? Why in the chat box if this is, if this is making sense in terms of how you can start with the weekly chart and actually zoom in and you from from the, the information you're getting on the weekly chart end up on a, a you know an intraday time frame a four hour time frame with some specific areas of interest and potential um, trading opportunities okay so that's the dollar index let's look at uh, the euro and let's start with the weekly so some interesting things on the uh, the weekly chart with the euro dollar. If we look at, uh, if we look back, this is, like I said, we're on the weekly time frame here. And if we look back at the, um, at some prior uh, corrective phases in terms of, um, in terms of the Euro dollar, if we go back to the last big advance that we saw in the Euro dollar, which was from the 2012 low into that uh, 2014 high, um, we can see that we had this initial move off the low which um, when we look at the 2016 low, we also have a similar scale in terms of move, in terms of move, in terms of uh, time as well from the low into the high. Again, this isn't exact on a weekly chart here. It's gonna be very difficult to pinpoint down to, to the, uh, the hours and minutes, but you can get a broad sense of what the scope and scale of the move is. And if we overlay these prior swings versus our current swing low, um, then we get uh, this current high that we're, or this, this, this resistance area that we've come into here around this 124 um, gives us some information that, you know, we may see a pullback here. Again, I'm not talking in terms of definitives or, you know, major tops or major lows. I'm just talking about pullbacks because at the moment, um, to all intents and purposes, to all intents purposes, sorry, the, uh, this advance looks um, pretty constructive. And so we, I, I perceive that we can see higher prices in terms of the euro, but we've come a lot, long way in a period of time, which during prior market phases has been a point at which the market has pulled back and, and we've corrected. So this is on the weekly time frame. What do I ultimately anticipate with the euro? Well, I'm looking um, in the, over the, uh, the early part of this year for us to test into the 128 area 
in terms of the euro dollar. I think we could go higher ultimately, but 128 is the, is the objective I'm currently focused on. And so now I wanna think about how we can get to this 128 from where we currently are, where we could be seeing a bit of uh, rate, a bit of price exhaustion in the near term. So if we drop down onto the daily time frame, <clears throat> and again, we've got, uh, what I've done here is mapped out. Let's move some of these around. Uh, that should be bear with me, guys. Boom. So here's the daily time frame. And again, what, what I'm immediately looking to do is identify potential five wave pattern here. Um, we've traded into what could be an equality objective here. And how I measure these equality objectives is well, what I'm looking at is wave one versus the potential wave four low, giving us a price target and a quality objective where price may stall out. Um, based upon uh, based upon uh, wave theory, and we've we've come just shy of there. But where, what we have tested importantly is this um, weekly predicted range resistance, and we've got a, two little tails suggesting there is some supply in the market there. We certainly haven't been able to get a close above one twenty three fifty at this stage. And we're seeing a, a reversal attempt here. Um, obviously, to to get excited about this, we'd want to see a daily close. Um, back through the 122.30 area, which is the, uh, the weekly <coughs> the weekly pivots, uh, similar obviously with the, the dollar index. But if we can get through there, then I think we can see a three-wave correction back into this 120 area before we advance for a potential uh, wave five to finish this cycle and then see a more um, sustained correction. So if we drill down onto the four-hour chart now, and you can see in more detail how I'm looking at this, um, we've got this channel, this uh, channel that we've been trading in. You can see again, I've identified a potential five-wave pattern here. And so we're, we're either, this is either going to be the wave five high here, and we, we're going to see the pullback from current levels, or if we still, if we continue to hold this uh, ascending trend line support here, then what I would suggest is that's going to be wave four, and we'll see one more push here into a new high, into that 123.70 area, which is that ideal objective um, with respect to the, um, the pattern. And so again, from there, I'd be watching for bearish reversal patterns. You can see we've got plenty of um, momentum divergence in play here. Um, so we'll see how we play, we'll see how this plays out. I've actually got a, a short position on at the moment in the Euro, um, see if this is the way five high. And again, this is, so this is the thing about these market maps. Um, this is a good skill to have in terms of developing, uh, developing your ability to, to read the market and, be, and get in sync with the market. But at the same time, um, that's just one aspect of, uh, well, that isn't really an aspect of trading. That's an aspect of market analysis. Um, trading is about identifying risk reward, obviously, and then being prepared to put on a position and find out uh, whether or not you know, you know, the, the, the trade is actually going to work versus a, a very specific setup. So um, what, what's very important is not to confuse the two. Market analysis is independent and separate of actually trading, putting on a position and managing the position and managing the risk reward. Risk reward being the most important part of, uh, of the trading process. But for now, we'll see uh, if we can take out this trend channel support, then um, we could have the wave five high for this, this swing at least in place. Um, like I say, I'm, you know, if, I view any move lower here uh, as corrective. And what I'm actually looking for um, in the near term is that we see a test up into, uh, into that 128 area. So any move back into 120 to my mind, I'd be watching for bullish reversal patterns to uh, set long positions to align with that broader trend. So that's the Euro dollar. Let's, uh, let's check in with cable here. We'll move out to the weekly chart to start with and zoom out a bit. Similar to the Euro, I've identified, as you can see here, um, some of the last major swings off some major lows in terms of cable um, would give us a move really up into this 138 area in terms of cable. We've come just shy at the moment. We're just sitting on a, an internal trend line here at the 137 area, which, uh, which may prove a, uh, a point from which we correct. Ideally, I'd like to see us test this 138 um, before we see uh, before we see a pullback in terms of cable versus like I've discussed in the uh, sessions towards the end of last year as we hold 126 as support my actual price target for sterling this year is going to be up into that 
147.39. So again, I'm looking for pullbacks to align with a potentially broader uh, trend and, and larger opportunity in terms of, of upside in, uh, with sterling. So um, anything in and around this 138, any pullbacks, I'd be looking uh, to identify areas then to, to align with the, uh, the broader trend versus 126 targeting 147. So if we take this onto the daily chart now, and you can see we've got a we're in a we're in a wedge here in the top side of the wedge. So uh, pullbacks into now the wedge support coming in at this 133 uh, would be interesting. Certainly to do something on the long side, looking for that 138 test as uh, as discussed. And again, we can take this down onto the four hour chart and get a little bit more granular here. So we're sitting at some support here in cable. So if we can hold this, um, this current trend line, then there's the opportunity to trade up into that 138. Now from that 138, again, looking up for divergence in terms of the momentum studies, watch for reversal patterns at 138 to set up a test of the trend line back down to 133 before again, I think we can uh, take off meaningfully to the upside in terms of, uh, in terms of sterling. <coughs> dollar yen let's take this out quickly to the weekly chart uh, dollar yen is a, a quite an interesting um, setup here a broader perspective in terms of the dollar yen um, from that 2012 low we had a clearly defined five wave advance well i think where we are now is we're in a bigger correction of a b equals c objective so i'm looking ultimately for a move down to 91 uh, 85 in terms of the, the dollar yen and um, what we want to be thinking about in terms of the, the wave structure is where we are um, if we go on to the, uh, the daily chart now and you can see we've got a pretty nicely defined trend channel here potential wave three low in place so what i'd be looking for now is a wave four to complete um, in three waves into this 104 trend channel resistance before we get the next leg lower, which I think will ultimately see us test into these prior lows at the 101 handle. Uh, so now thinking in terms of uh, where we could get into an opportunity in the dolly yen, let's go to the four hour chart. So at the moment I see two opportunities in the dolly yen. I see one um, being an opportunity to, uh, to do something on the long side. And what I'd be looking for is price to stall out in and around current levels, 103.80, and get a pullback into uh, this 102.90, which again, in, to my mind, will give us a potential inverse head and shoulder scenario, <coughs> which, um, which would then set up the uh, third leg to push into this 104.29. So any pullback into this 102.90 area, watching for bullish reversal patterns on the on the four hour time frame here to do something on the long side, looking for that trend channel test and potential uh, correct to, uh, completion of the wave four, then we set up that wave five down into, into the 101 area. So that's what I'm watching in terms of dollar yen. And last but not least, let's check in with the Aussie. Let's go to the weekly chart. So um, similar, similar thesis really to, uh, to the sterling and the euro. You can see uh, we had this initial move off the 08 lows in terms of the Aussie, and we've just ex marginally exceeded it in terms of scope and scale at the moment, but we are finding a little bit of resistance here. Ultimately, I'm looking for a test of this 80 handle um, and this major descending trend line resistance. From there, I think we could see a, a pullback um, but ultimately the, the target versus the 70, uh, 70 handle low is an equality objective up at 89.25. So again, what I'm thinking, you know, thinking in terms of the markets, in terms of two-way trade, uh, we've had this initial burst off the lows here. Um, I think we could be in for a correction to develop something like we saw over here, in and around here, before we extend higher. Um, later in the year in terms of the Australian dollar. So if we then bring this down into the daily chart and we can look a bit more specifically uh, where the opportunities are. So like I said, I'm looking, we're, you can see this clearly defined wedge that we're in at the moment whilst we hold this trend line support and I believe uh, all roads lead to this, certainly to the 80 
and then on towards 82 in terms of the uh, in terms of the Australian dollar. But in terms of two-way trading and opportunities on both sides of the market, um, well, at the moment, I've actually got a short position on in the Australian dollar. There's the potential that this is a wave five high here. We've traded into daily and weekly predicted range resistance at that 78.20 area, so a pretty nice pullback. Hasn't really extended at this stage. Um, and if we hold the current lows, then I can still see scope for us to test this trend line up to the 7850s. But again, pay attention to the divergence in terms of the momentum study, because uh, what I've been watching for is bearish reversal patterns, to set short positions. Ultimately, I'm looking then for a pullback into the 75 area. But again, from there, I'd certainly be watching uh, for bullish reversal patterns, to set long positions, looking for that uh, look at that 80 handle you can see hopefully you can hopefully this has been a, a good working example of how you can use these higher time frames um, to actually develop your your bigger uh, thesis in the market and then you overlaying the same uh, wave theory or however you you approach the markets as long as you're consistent um, you can see quite clearly how you can track down into these lower time frames and actually identify uh, two-way trading opportunities, both on the long and the and the short side of the market. Um, so those are the those are the charts that I uh, that I want to discuss with you today. I hope you've uh, you found those useful. Does anyone have any questions or charts they'd like me to take a look at that I haven't uh, covered? Uh, zoom, zoom, sterling yen. Let's take a look at sterling yen. So sterling yen. <coughs> Um, looking, I guess, if we think in terms of the sterling yen, what we're really thinking about um, in more ways than one really is the, um, is the sterling dollar. And so what you'd be anticipating with the sterling yen is that we would see, um, we would see similar uh, price moves in terms of the uh, sterling, uh, sterling dollar. So if we go we'll quickly run out here to the weekly chart, and, uh, and what we've got here, um, certainly versus, uh, versus this swing low at the 132, if we can break this um, descending trend line resistance coming in currently at 142, then I see we've got scope for a move up to one, uh, 151. Now, how do we get there in terms of the, um, the near term time frame as well? What we've got here in terms of the daily, let's go back. So we've got this trend channel support. Um, what I would be looking for would be a break up into this trend line resistance. So if, uh, let me draw this in for you. So if we can get up through this, uh, through this resistance into these prior highs over here at 142 and this trend line resistance, then what I'd see from there <coughs> would be a three-way pullback, ideally, something like this, into this area here at the 138. Uh, could be a bit higher by that stage, 139. But that's where the buying opportunity is, I think, uh, to see prices break out then. And then we can target the next, uh, next resistance area up at 144. So, um, and then from that 144, we can start thinking in terms of retest of the trend line from above. And then we can start to build the case onwards for getting up into this, uh, this 151 target area. Does that make, uh, does that make sense, um, Zoom? Hopefully that, so that comes out. Charlie, more of a sentiment question. How's the capital building rights going away on the dollar? Also now the Senate's majority. Uh, yeah, so obviously, I mean, a, uh, you know, another bizarre start to the year um, with what we saw last night in terms of the US. Um, you know, there, there, are, there are much more um, broader questions in play, I think, personally, with respect to uh, America and America exceptionalism, um, which I think uh, is potentially on the wane here. But um, in terms of the dollar, I think, I think probably this, that, that bout of um, unrest that we saw last night and the potential for that to, you know, maybe... Uh, roll over in, in and around the inauguration. I think we could see a couple of weeks here of a bit of dollar stability on the uh, simply as as you know as uh, as a safe haven. 
Um, ultimately, my view is, as you know, I'm, you know, I'm structurally bearish the dollar, but I do think we're in the zone here in and around current levels where we could see a corrective phase. But, you know, that, that, that's all I see as, you know, as a correction. And then what I'd certainly be looking for would be, you know, really, you know, looking on the short side in terms of the dollar as, uh, as we head out through the year. But in the near term, um, certainly we could see some, some dollar, uh, near term dollar strength. I'm reluctant to call it strength as such, but, you know, short covering and, and a corrective phase is really, uh, is really what I would, uh, what I'd refer to it as. Does that make sense, Charlie? Uh, Benjamin, very basic question. Can you zoom back to the start point of weekly uh, trend lines? Um, it, it, uh, in which, which, which pair, Ben? Spent. Um, ah, Sterling Yen. Okay, yeah. So, what you're looking for in terms, I, I understand what your, where your question is coming from now. Um, the reason why I've got this trend line here is you can clearly find three points of test. So, where we've, let's uh, let's do this. So what we can see here is we have this, this trend line has is, is now clearly been broken and we've retested it and held it. And so what we're looking at is where was the last point um, of, tre of trend resistance, which was here. And then we're tracking back to see, can we connect clearly uh, without having to, you know, um, let me just move that one, make it easier to, for you guys to see. So without having to use too much jiggery pokery to make the line fit, you can clearly see that from this point, we have this point and we have this point. So there are three points of connection there. So that's why I would suggest that this trend line will be in play. I ultimately think it gets broken because as you know, um, to my mind, fourth tests of any trend line or support or resistance level tend to give way. So I'm, I'm really using, I'm only using this as a point where we may see a pullback I don't think it's going to define a trend change as such. And so, uh, so I think we, we, we can see an extension uh, through that trend line. Does that make sense, Ben? Uh, Khalil, is your microphone working, Khalil? Uh, hi, Khalil. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, Happy New Year. And to you too. <laughs> Uh, I had a I had a problem over New Year's. Um, my computer crashed. Everything lost. All the back testing I done gone. Oh no! I know. Totally devastated. Oh. Two months of work down the day. Nothing. I've got nothing again. I'm starting from scratch. Oh no! That's hard. <laughs> so uh, such is life. Um, is it possible to do? Have you done NZD, USD, and uh, UOJPY? No. UOJ? Oh. Um, so the, the Kiwi, um, the Kiwi basically you can uh, think about in terms of the, uh, the Aussie, but I'll just show you what, uh, what we're looking at here with the Kiwi. So again, the Kiwi, to my mind, um, what I'd be thinking is, what did we do back in 08? We got up here like that. And if we clone that, bring it over here you can see we're in and around the ballpark of that initial advance of the lows in 08, which we stalled out and got a bit of a pullback. Um, so what I'd be thinking in terms of the Kiwi here is a similar idea to that of, um, of the Aussie. So if, we, if I just get rid of uh, that and then we go to the daily chart. Let's put this up here like so. Okay, so what I want to be thinking about is can I identify a, a potential five way pattern here, which could complete, provide a pullback that will then allow me to, to join the broader trend. And so quite, uh, at least to my eye anyway, we've got one, two, three, four, and here's potential five. 
And so if this is the five, um, what additional information do I want to confirm that? Well, I want to see some uh, divergence in terms of the momentum studies, which we've clearly got down here. We've also got the RSI stochastic price making new high, RSI stochastic failing to make a new high and rolling over, got a potential bearish reversal developing here. And so then what I want to be looking at is um, where would I, you know, where could we see this thing pull back to? Well, um, to my mind, it would be pretty easy to see a move that would have us back into this 68 area. Um, but then from there, again, you know, you, then you want to be thinking about uh, being on the long side. Um, but certainly at the moment, given the setup in terms of momentum studies and what the price is telling us and the price pattern, um, certainly we're right at least for a corrective phase. And again, what you can use to, to help give you some markers here is that last correction would, uh, would see us back down to this 70 area. So the, this ABC could be much, uh, much sharper in terms of, you know, we could see an A, uh, B and C finishing here at the 70 level. And again, what you're looking at then is, you know, is the price gonna confirm that for us? Um, what we have got here is a very steep trend line, but look where that trend line comes in. Right back at this equality level. So, I mean, to my mind, uh, all eyes really want to be on uh, a correction that takes us into this area. So let me draw that in for you. So thinking in terms of this type of thing, and then are the buyers going to step back in? Because if they do, you know, we've, there are upside targets ahead of us. But if they don't, then what does that do? Well, it sets ex expectations um, for a broader pullback. And, um, and when, we, when we think in terms of that, we want to be looking at the cycle lows into the cycle highs. Um, I don't think necessarily we need to look all the way back to 50%. First stop, more often than not, is, uh, is going to be this 38.2. And a pullback into the 38.2% of the entire swing would, uh, would have us back at 66 and still the trend would be intact. Um, the, the area of interest for me really on, uh, on any pullback would, uh, would really be these prior highs. I think that's, uh, that's where they could likely pick this up again. So, uh, you know, a snapback that, uh, that sees us retest 68 as support and then sets us up for, uh, for the next leg higher. Does that make sense, Cleo? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I think, I think uh, people are still buying the key dollar. So, yeah, that does make sense. Yeah. Good stuff. Any other questions? Okay, guys, if there aren't any other questions, um, I'm going to wrap this one up here. And um, thanks for joining in. Thanks for the, uh, the questions. And we will reconvene at the, uh, the same time next week. Thanks very much, guys. Hope this helps.